Hi guys, my name is Raina. If you're new here, then welcome. Welcome to today's video. We're gonna apply a lot of e.l.f. cosmetics product on my face. So today we're doing a getting ready with me, testing one brand, and also to review their new Camel CC cream. So the first half of the video is me voice overing it for various reasons, but you hear my voice in the second half of the video. First, let's get the primers out. I've got e.l.f. Poreless uh, Party Primer. This is one of my favorite pore minimizing primer. It is a big jar that I feel like I can use this one forever. It does super well with smoothing my pores, minimize appearances, also soothing the skin and help makeup last longer. So I like to use it around my T-zone where I have a lot of pores, where I tend to have a bit of oil in it coming, shine come through. I actually feel like this one better than the Benefit Professionalist Pore Minimizing Primer. I just like this one a little bit better and I know a lot of people love the benefit as well. And as you can tell, my skin had a bit of blemishes so the CC cream that we're going to use in a minute can truly test out the uh, coverage in a second. Now I've got e.l.f. Camel CC cream. I will do a almost 10 hours wear test for today. So this one I've got in the shade 205 Neutral, so it's like a light neutral. It does come with a nice pump, which I really enjoy. And I'll do half face with sponge, half face with the brush. I think the shade actually matches me well. It's a little bit lighter than I expected, but it ended up working well for me. So first I've got the sponge side. I'm using a Real Technique sponge. I think I had two pumps. And then I usually just dot it all around my face and kind of blend it with my finger. When I realize it's a bit too hard to further blend it out, I will use the sponge to even out everything. And then we'll have a look of the coverage as well as the finish. This foundation claiming having a color correcting full coverage natural finish. And ingredient wise, it got collagen, peptides, niacinamide. It also gives SPF 30 ball spectrum protection. I do think it blends easily, very well covered my face with a sponge. I can see a almost medium coverage just with the sponge. I do feel like it giving a nice natural finish. The glow is pretty, but you can still see the spots that I've got underneath. So I think I just add a little bit more, see if I can build it up just a little bit. Areas where I have my dark circles, I have my acne scars, and I decide to use the sponge again just to gently pat over to add out that coverage. And I think it is a beautiful foundation. What I really like about the side with sponge is that shine coming through. It's definitely one of those natural finish. When I look this side, it reminds me of my favorite Estee Lauder double wear foundation. They're not exactly the same. I think that one is a little bit better, but you can see the difference between the two sides. The skin's a lot more evened out and it looks a little bit more glowy. So on the other side, I have added one more pump. So I pretty much use one pump on each half of my face. And I've got my It Cosmetics Kabuki brush. This is a very, very nice brush. It's nice and small, blend things out easily. And it seems to be working well with the brush as well with this foundation. There's no marks that I see and it wasn't patchy. I feel like the side with the brush probably gives a, just a little bit more coverage. If you say the sponge side, it's like medium or medium light coverage. The side with the brush is definitely a solid medium coverage. I don't feel like I need to do any touch up on this side. I'm pretty happy. Both sides still give a nice natural glow, but I do feel the sponge side just glows a little bit. But the coverage on the brush side, definitely winning. So it depends on your preference. If you like a bit of natural glow, then use a sponge. If you like more coverage, then maybe it's the brush. So far, first impression, I'm very happy with the finish of this Camel CC cream. But I do found it's just leave a little bit tackiness. So I will need to set this a bit later on. Before we go ahead, I decided to use my e.l.f. Ride or Die Lip Balm. I've got in the shade Tough Cookie. This is actually a very beautiful shade. Even if you want to wear it on everyday basis, you want to take a nourishment lip balm, but with a bit of color. One downside, it is very sticky. So if you're going out on a windy day and you have your hair sort of on your 
shoulder, you will assure there's gonna be hair stuck on your lips. But I do like the nourishment it provides and the color it provides. It's something I really, really enjoy. This is a 100% vegan, cruelty-free product. And now moving on to my concealers. I've got two concealers. One is their Camel Concealer, the classic. And then the other is the 16 Hours Hydration Camel Concealer. The reason I got two is I want to test out both first. Obviously the shade a bit off as well. The Hydrating Camel Concealer is the darker shade, which I've got in light beige. It's too dark for me. The lighter one is the 16 Hour Camel Concealer. It's in light peach, which is too light for me. So I will just mix them up together and you just need a tiny, tiny bit and it will do all the coverage. I do found formula wise, I enjoy the hydrating a bit more. So I mix them together, also make the concealer less drying under my eyes. But you can tell three dots on each side and I feel like I can probably use two dots by now and it gives a nice coverage and also lifting my under eye appearances where I personally have a lot of dark circles as you can tell. I do really enjoy these two and there are quite big bottles as well very very affordable not to mention and I just use the residual kind of going around my t-zones just to slightly lighten sort of the high point of my face. Before I go any further, I need to drink a bit of my coffee that definitely wakes me up. I feel like I'm alive all over again. You can tell I was really, really enjoying it. I think it's time to set my face now. For setting my face, I've got my Project Pen product. It's an e.l.f. I believe it's called Under Eye Setting Powder. They changed the packaging into a round one and now I can't find them on the website. I use a e.l.f. pointy brush as well just to set my under eye and it does kind of just make the concealer less tacky so it doesn't sort of crease into my wrinkles there and then I'll just use the residual to the rest of my face where I tend to go a little bit oily which is around my t-zone there and my sort of wrinkles I'm starting to have wrinkles yeah I know I can tell and for the face complexion, I have this e.l.f. contour palette. It's got two lighter shades, one highlighter, one more for like brightening, and then two darker shades, one warmer bronzer, one slightly darker one. So I decided to use the dark one to bronze as well as to contour my face. And I've got a BH Cosmetics brush. I do really enjoy BH Cosmetics brush. They're very, very affordable. I do really enjoy this palette as well. I couldn't find it on their official website, but I did found it on Adore Beauty. I decided to mix them up a little bit so I can have a little bit more color payoff because the dark one seems to be not showing as obvious as I like. With the lighter shade, it definitely, you can tell that bronzing color start to show on my skin. It is actually quite subtle and this brush definitely helps as well. So it is a fluffy yet kind of dense and it's not too fluffy so that you don't have to worry that it will brush to everywhere. I do like to sort of brush around my jawline there because I tend to eat on my right side so that is all the side looks a little bit bigger compared to the other. So you just see me doing my double chin so I decided to sculpting there as well. Then I decided to use the slightly lighter shade just to kind of buff everything together so there's no harsh lines so it evens out and then I've got my one and only or well not the only one but one of the few non-elf products this is the Savvy by Designer Brands blush. I've got in the color Nude. It does a little bit sheen. I really do enjoy this color. However, when I go back to my um, footage, I realized I probably applied a little bit too much. And plus this sort of color does not match well with my clothes. The shade provides a almost like a sunburned kind of look which is very popular these days, especially when you apply the blush across the um, tip of the nose there. So it actually feels like it's been burned by the sun. I do really, really like, like this color. You can see me reapplying it. Although now I'm looking back, it's not the perfect fit, but overall after I done my eyes and brows and everything, it looked all right. So with my highlighters, I've got two options. I do have an e.l.f. one. It's called Baked Apricot Glow. You can't tell the shade, but you can tell from the pen. It's more of like a 
blush topper or you know it's just not light enough but it creates a nice shimmer so i use that one just on top of the blush to give a little bit of sheen and then i've decided to go back to use the elf contour palette that i had earlier from the lightest shade the highlighter shade just to give a little bit more highlight to the high point of my face i do really want to emphasize to make my nose a little bit taller because I have a quite flat nasal there. Because I don't have any e.l.f. brow products, so I'm just going to use my Modico Instant Brow. I'm back with the brow. I'm going to play with some eyeshadows today. First, I've got the e.l.f. Bite Size Eyeshadow in the shade Truffles. I decide to use the lightest the matte shade, the second one on the left, to go all over my lid and then decide to use the second darkest shade to kind of go around my outer corner and i was talking to my mom completely irrelevant to today's video um, i was just emphasizing it trying to give a little bit of definition it works well it's not the most pigmented sort of shade as i imagined and i used it a couple times already so i decided to go in with the darkest shade which it actually has a little bit like shimmer glitter in it to try to emphasize a little bit more and also just do an eyeliner if possible. I did create a little bit. It's still not my perfect ideal sort of situation, but it did work. With the shimmer, I decided to play with the glitter single eyeshadows first. I was tossing between the two color, uh, Copper Pop and 24K Gold. So I decided to use Copper Pop first. I just directly applied on my eyelid and I blend it out, I realized it didn't leave a bit of pigmentation. It left all the glitters on it. And that is not something I was after. I was hoping to have that copper -ish shade left on my eyelid as well. So you can tell I wasn't very, very happy. I decided to go back to the quad, use the silver shimmer shade. Just pop it around the inner corner and also sort of all the way to the outer corner of my eyelid. I created a cooler tone look rather than a warm eye look where I was originally intended to be. And then using the brush to buff it all around. It is good to have my voice back and unfortunately I was running out of time filming the rest plus my battery was dead. So I just didn't have the time to do any of those. I did finish my eye look with the bite size eyeshadow. I've got in the shade Truffles. I think everything over here is pretty kind of warm ish neutral look. So I want to go more warm rather than cool tone. I tried to use the Copper Pop glitter, but this one's pure just glitter. So it's not like emphasizing any warmth to my look. And I had no other like shimmer shadow, so I just went with this one. And obviously, my whole look turns into more cooler tone. So I used this shimmer shade to the inner part of my eyelid. I didn't really want it to have a very cool tone look, so I end up using the 24K Gold, and I like this shimmer glitter better than this one. I can able to get some yellowish tone on top in the middle of the, like the center of my eyes and then I still remain some glitters. So I would say I do still kind of enjoying the two glitters, especially I feel like I need to play with copper pop a little bit more, but the e.l.f. Bite Size eyeshadow, this particular shade Truffles, I have used it for different times, maybe once in front of the camera as well. And every time when I use it, I feel like each individual shade is perfect and great. But the combination to put it in this quad, it's just not my personal favorite. So I might end up actually decluttering this. And back to the CC cream, I do think it has a quite good coverage. And I'm just going to have another quick look. I was filming around 11 and now we're nearly one o'clock so it's just been on my face for two hours so it's a little bit quick check-in as well i did one outside and then came back had a little walk indoor it is a quite kind of me to full coverage foundation and it does feel like you can see that i have makeup on my face it's not one of those natural finish which that's what they're claiming i think the finish is more makeup finish when I first used it, I feel like this one is very similar to the Estee Lauder one, the way how they shows on the face, how it applies, especially with sponge, the shine it gives, I was really enjoying it. 
but now when I look at it, I feel like I still prefer the side with the sponge because I can see more glow versus the side that I use the brush. Even after I applied highlighter, I feel like this side is still more glowy. And that's definitely a bonus for what I like for a heavy makeup. I don't want my heavy makeup go matte, but I do want my natural makeup doesn't shine too much. So it's not too oily, but my heavy ones still have my natural glow through. So I do like the side with the sponge and I do think it looks a little bit makeup key, but it's not selling to my wrinkles and it's not crazy around my nose. It hasn't been wearing off. Like I don't think I can feel any tech in this. Like everything stays on pretty well. The contouring palette, like this quad, I've actually quite enjoyed it. I've maybe applied it twice before over all the years I have this. So I actually wanted to use this a little bit more. Everything else is pretty good. The lipstick I use, I forgot to tell you, I use the um, Seriously Satin Lipstick from e.l.f. I've got in the shade Cinder. I didn't remove my lip balm, I just applied on top of it. They are actually in a very, very similar shade. This is a kind of like a satiny finish with the lip balm underneath it actually gives a little bit of natural glow more than what the lipstick provides just by itself i do really like the two lip products that i've used so everything else is something i've already tried with the foundation i think i'm gonna see how long it can last i will insert a photo where i did a swatch after i let some of the foundation dry and i do think it actually oxidizes a little bit not too bad in my opinion because when I first apply my makeup, my face and neck in a slightly different color. But now I feel like they're blending a little bit better because the shade it is oxidizing maybe half of the shade each. So that's something to keep in mind. And I will see you guys in a few hours. Hey guys, this is like nearly 10 o'clock now and I almost forgot to do an update. This will be my second and my final update. So I've got this one from 12 to 22, so well 10 or over 10 hours on my face now. And I'm having an indoor bathroom light here. Looking just up closer, I actually think the makeup stays on very well. And I did check with my mom early on to see how she thinks in real life, sort of looking at me. She reckon it definitely looks like I've got makeup. But it's a makeup that it still looks natural, although you know you have makeup on. It's not cakey. I think the coverage has sort of came down, but I did like a lot of touching around my eyes. Concealers, I reckon that has worn off there a bit. Eyeshadows has a little bit smudge. It might come in from the shadow, it might come in from the liner, mascara, etc. But just looking overall at the foundation itself, I do think it's a really good long lasting a quite full coverage foundation from the drugstore if that's what you after will that beat my favorite Estee Lauder double wear I still think that one is better but if you are after this one and you want something cheaper than Estee Lauder then this is definitely a good option to go for and just quick back to the eyeshadows I do want to keep the glitters I do think they kind of stay still in place but shadows i just don't like the performance mom said it was very natural she can barely tell i put something on so i guess it's just not as colorful as what i usually do but i guess that's like really impressive with that foundation so that's my final check-in so we got 10 hours wear test and i think that's actually a success and that's pretty much everything for today's video i hope you guys really enjoyed it i haven't been doing a like test the review video for a while and plus with my sisters here it's i'm less consistent with my checking and reporting with you guys but anyway that is all for today i hope you guys have a great time stay safe and stay positive and i'll see you guys in my next video bye